Hello, I'm Ben of Board Game Schoolhouse, and this is Elementary, where you can come to learn how to get the most at a family board game night. Today, we're talking about Richard Scarry's Busy Town. Hey, it's time to laugh and play. So have a happy day. Come visit Busy Town. Busy Town is a fully cooperative, two to four player, spin and move, seek and find game, best suited for three to eight year olds. It is among the best first board games for young children. It teaches basic concepts like taking turns, moving, working together, and counting. But we'll get to all that later. For now, let's make sure we're familiar with the game. The premise of the game is this. A group of busy towners is headed to Picnic Island to enjoy a meal together. But will they make it before the pigs eat all the food? Players must work together to find hidden objects in town to reach Picnic Island as quickly as possible. On each player's turn, they'll spin the spinner and check the result, then either move or draw a golden bug card to start a timed seek and find round, or remove some food from Picnic Island and spin again. But the focus of elementary isn't to summarize the rulebook. It's to teach you how to maximize the experience of board games for kids. So let's get started with that now. And you're invited too! Come visit Busy Town! Since you're, you know, watching this video, I would assume that you're someone who would like to instill a love of board games in kids. So we need to talk about how to set a kid up for success for their first board game ever. That's a great idea. If Busytown is going to be a child's first board game, your focus at all times should be ensuring that that child feels safe, is having fun, and that valuable messages are being reinforced. So how do you do that? Thanks for asking. First of all, it's key to ask the child if they want to play the game with you. Asking them to play the game as opposed to telling them that they're going to play helps them to feel a lot more in control of what's happening. This ties directly into them feeling safe and ultimately having fun. Make sure you already know the rules of the game before playing and that you have a plan for how you're going to teach the rules to the kids. If explaining board game rules to kids stresses you out, it just so happens that I make how to play videos specifically for kids. Avoiding rules confusion will help everyone feel more safe and have more fun. Lastly, you gotta get your own mind right before you start playing the game. You need to prepare yourself to be patient, selfless, and wholly engaged in this activity. If you need to put the phone in the other room, do it. Think about the experience you want the child to have and plan accordingly. Great advice. The youngest players will need help understanding which end of the arrow is the tip. Help them understand this by narrating aloud the result of each spin. For example, you might say, oh, I see you spun a two, as you point to the tip of the arrow in the two wedge. Kids might be sometimes disappointed if they don't spin a golden bug, and they wanna spin again or just point the arrow to the golden bug. Don't let them do this. Be gentle about it, but don't let them do this. It's important to build integrity with kids right from the get-go by having them stick to the rules of the game. There should be the same set of rules for everyone. Kids, especially really young ones, might rage quit when you do this. If that happens, you need to keep the game safe by not losing your cool. Stick to your guns about following the rules of the game, validate their feelings, and offer to take a break. If a kid full-on quits the game, you might have to drop a gentle, I'm really disappointed that we're not going to follow the rules and finish the game. I hope we can try again sometime because I really like playing games with you. Master Kenobi, you disappoint me. Ah, uh, no, not like a Sith Lord. I said say it gently, not like a Sith Lord. Most of the time, it's not going to be an issue, so let's just move on. There are some pretty interesting choices to make about what path to take on the board. Now, kids are usually pretty excited to always take the route that heads towards the shortcut, even when they go right past it. Don't stop the game to try to explain to a four-year-old that they've taken an inefficient path. Just Say something along the lines of, oh, I see you went towards the shortcut and you cruised right past it with a smile on your face. Last note about movement. Set an example of using cooperative and encouraging language whenever moving. It's kind of crazy how early kids begin to think that everything is a race or that everything is a competition. In busy town, everyone is working together and rooting for each other. So make that clear in your own language. For example, you might say things like, Oh, look, we're all on the bridge together. I kind of like it when we're all near each other on the board. Or maybe, oh, darn, I was really hoping you'd spin a three because you would have been able to take that shortcut. I know how much you like those. Stuff like that. 
You know the parents who get way too involved in their kids' school projects? They have a really hard time with the golden bug rounds. Knowing how to help a child in the time seek and find rounds can be a little tough. You don't want to just find something for them and let them put the magnifying glass down. That's a cheap victory for them. But also you don't want them to be lost and floundering and feel like they can't contribute either. So here's what you do if a kid isn't finding something. Give them increasingly specific hints to help them feel like they're contributing as much as possible. This is a real teaching strategy, by the way, and you might find yourself using it when guiding kids in other ways too, which is great. But in busy town, it might sound something like this. Oh, I think that I saw a shovel somewhere in the farm section of busy town. And if the child doesn't know where the farm is, you can tell them and say, the farm is where they grow food in busy town. And if they still are struggling to find the shovel, you might say something like, I'm pretty sure that I saw a character holding the shovel on the farm. At that point, hopefully you don't need to give further clues, but if you do, it's not the end of the world. That's okay too. If we lose, what do you think we should do? Everybody panic! Shape the expectation ahead of time for what the appropriate response to losing is. This is absolutely essential for shaping what a child believes is a normal response to losing. Even when you lose, you need to make it abundantly clear to any of the children playing the game that you still had fun and that you're excited to play again with them sometime, or maybe even right away. If you can sprinkle in some specific compliments for the children too, that's even better. Side note, specific compliments is not you're so smart or you're so good at this. Those are garbage compliments and you should never say them again. What? Get specific, people. Say things like, I really enjoyed watching you find those traffic cones. Or, when you encouraged me after I spun pigs eat twice in a row, it really made me feel good. Say things like that. The procedure after winning is honestly pretty much the same as losing. You need to make sure the children know that you had fun playing, that you look forward to doing it again sometime, and give them a specific compliment if you can. One last tip I have for you is to use observational language whenever you're playing board games with kids. Observational language is literally just saying aloud what you see someone else do. For example, you might say something like, Oh, I noticed that you counted out your move ahead of time to see if you'd land on the shortcut. Or, Oh, I saw that you had a big smile on your face when you found the bucket during the golden bug round. And as a side note, using observational language with kids is a good idea all of the time, not just when you're playing board games. And that's how you make the most of playing Busy Town with kids. If you'd like to watch a sample game play with a real-life human child, there's a link around here somewhere for that. And if you'd like to watch the How to Play video with your kids before setting up for the first time, that link's around here too. If you like the video, please prove it and subscribe if you're into that sort of thing. I'm Ben of Board Game Schoolhouse, and this has been Elementary. Busy town.